Praise the Lord today, saints of the Most High God. Hallelujah. We worship Him today and thank Him for this wonderful day that He's made and given us an opportunity to share His truth and His love and mercy and grace with all the saints of God and all the people in the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I thank You today that You brought us together to minister to You, unto You, Lord, Your truth and, and Your people. Oh God, you desire a truth in the inward parts, Lord, in your church, in your children today. You desire, Lord, that we walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. You desire that we seek you diligently every day, Lord. Help us to be obedient to you and to walk in your way. As we go through this chapter here, Lord, in Isaiah, that you would open our hearts, Lord, to see more clearly, more fully your awesome, wonderful revelation that you've given, how you have worked, how you have brought your people, Lord, into a fuller understanding of your way, as you remind us how stubborn and rebellious your people can be. Help us, Lord, to cry out to you from our hearts today that you would remove all the iniquity and that you would subdue it and cast it far from us oh god hallelujah and crush every work of darkness on behalf of your church in jesus name amen hallelujah amen. hallelujah isaiah the prophet isaiah's they consider him a major prophet of course 66 chapters of power uh spread over I don't know how many years he prophesied, but he was prophesying during several kings. We're going to start. We're going to read chapter 1 today, and we're going to look at today's church, you know. See, God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You, you can't uh, say, well, that was for the Jews back then, because you can see today similarities as we get into this. Let's, let's read this. I'm just going to start reading. The vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So there's four kings there. So he prophesied for a little while. Hallelujah. It says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Mm. They have rebelled against me. That's a, a grieving thing. Grieving. And it's it's the outcome of God's people. If you look at when Moses brought the children of Israel out of the wilderness, I mean out of Egypt into the wilderness, what happened? They rebelled against God. Why? Because of self. Well, because, because of, of the fleshly Right, the deal. flesh self and, and the worry and the anxiety about the way they were rebelling, rebelling against God. Well, they were spoiled to the things of Egypt. Right, amen. And if they didn't have them, where did it start? That's, <laughs> That's right. That's where the complaining started. That's right. That's where all the yeah, grievous stuff against That's Moses right. and stuff amen. is because they didn't have what they had in Egypt. That's right. He says here, the ox knoweth his owner. Okay. The ox, a dumb ox, knows its owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Mm. Okay, See, we are humans, we have the ability to reason, and instead of walking by faith, God's people were continually walking by sight. God had given all the representation through Moses of Christ in the temple and all the the uh, elements of the temple, the table of showbread, the, the candlestick all of gold, the altar of incense, the burnt offer, offering altar before the temple of sacrifice. Everything was pointing to Christ. The Ark of the Covenant. And it was all something you could see with your eyes, which was pointing to something spiritual that was coming. Okay? embodied in Jesus Christ now the fact is is the people did not walk in faith they did not believe 
okay, in faith. And so they, they could not consider. Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Today we are people of faith, saints. We are walking by faith and not by sight. We can't pay attention to what we're seeing. We pay attention to the faith of the Lord Jesus. You know, I find it interesting on this verse, verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner. Now, yeah. you know, the, there's a reprimand being given right here to the people. The ox, hey, the ox knows its owner and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Wow, that's like a... Right. I mean, it's like he's saying the animals know, but you guys don't know. Right. He says, but my people do not consider. And that is to separate mentally, to distinguish, understand. That's not, we're not considering, okay, is this of the Lord? Is this of the Lord? Is this of the world? Right. God wants us to understand and have spiritual intelligence to distinguish what is of him and what is of the world, what's of the flesh, okay? What causes that, though, you know, what causes that is the fact of uh, not being able to know or consider. <laughs> you know, why is that? Because the heart isn't right. Right, the heart is not set the heart's not wholly right. upon the Lord. Right. A lot of times that can, that can be mm -hmm. the reason. Other times it's because the Lord does not give us the revelation because he wants us to... He wants us to draw closer to him, drawing in, you know, how you know how it is sometimes when yes. we're going through stuff. Uh -huh. And and the Lord says, Draw into me, seek me, come into me. See? See, we're coming in we're in tumultuous times right now. We always have this phrase like we like to say it and other people, we're coming into no, we're in tumultuous times in this world. This yeah. world is heaving to and fro, okay? Like a drunkard. Especially and, spiritual. Yes, amen. That's right. And mm -hmm. and so we must consider we must know okay you know god he says his people do not consider we must be uh we must be cunning jesus said be wise as a serpent harmless as a dove okay uh, we must direct discern okay we must have intelligence see and we get that from the lord as we submit to him and surrender to him he's going to give us the intelligence that we need verse four ah sinful nation Ah, sinful nation. God's calling his people a sinful nation. When you look at the, the state of the church today, you see a lot of the world and a lot of the self-life mingled into the things of Christianity, okay? The, the doctrines and the teachings of Christianity. God says, ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, mm. a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Mm. Backward. Serious. Back to the world. Back to Egypt. Mm. God says, no, don't do that. Okay? Don't do that. God says, keep your focus on me. Walk with me. Verse 5. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. And I believe the Lord is speaking here in verse 5 where he says the whole head is sick. It's the reason. We're trying as a church today, the church is trying to use its, its mental capacity, its carnal reason to distinguish the things of God, the things that can only be received by faith and by revelation. You know, What's coming to me on this verse is that, you know, the Lord does, uh, if, if people do not come uh, by the way of his goodness, and, and he does draw people by the way of his goodness, but if that doesn't work, then comes the rod. Right. And what I get out of this is that He's saying, why should ye be stricken anymore? Right. Why do I need to waste my time with this rod on you anymore? Right. Because he's saying, because you're going to revolt right. more and more. Basically, even if I do. Because you're sick from the head to your toe, basically. Yeah, he says, from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and 
bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Mm. Now that is so... That's a sick, sick... That's sick. Deal. It is. And that's this church of today in America, in the Western nations, we see this, this whole electronic age, if you will, coming into the church. And it's all about uh, having fun and just being noticed and just all sorts of things we could spend hours talking about it but that's I think you understand what we're saying here the, the Lord wants us to be focused on him in faith walking in faith it says in verse 7 your country is desolate your cities are burned with fire now this is a prophecy that God's given to Isaiah this has been repeated throughout the centuries okay We've seen this happen. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. And all this is because... Of rebellion. Of rebellion. I mean, this is the result, basically, <laughs> of rebellion. Amen. And it says, And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge, in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. You think about that. A small remnant. A small remnant except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. See, God has a very small remnant, a nucleus of believers in America who are sold out to Him in their heart. Their hearts are sold out to God to do what God tells them to do. And you know if you're one of those people. You know that you love the Lord and that you're seeking the Lord daily, diligently, to, to do what He tells you to do with the law that he wrote in your heart the revelation he's given you of the son and now he's he's delivered you out of so much wickedness and sin and he's still teaching us how to walk by faith and not by sight no one can say oh I've attained oh I've I've arrived I've made it I don't have to worry about walking by faith anymore mm -hmm. because if we ever get to that place where we think we're like that God's going to just take us and he's going to break our legs in the spirit, so to speak, to teach us. You aren't. You nothing. aren't who you think you are. See? <laughs> right. And that's what the Lord is saying. He's saying He's left us a small remnant. Aren't you glad? Aren't you? I'm very glad. I'm thankful to be a part of that remnant by the grace of God. And I hope you're just rejoicing right now that you are a part of that remnant. And if you're not, turn around. Come back to the Lord. Get right with God. Surrender today. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. Now, if America is not Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, Billy Graham was quoted as saying years ago, years ago, that if, if God doesn't judge America, he's going to have to repent to Sodom and Gomorrah. He's going to tell them he's sorry. See, this whole land of Sodom and Gomorrah of America, Sodom and Gomorrah represent a certain sin. Let's look at that. It's in Ezekiel 16, verse 49. We're going to look at this because I think God wants us to expound on this. We see it in America very, very much. Chapter 16, verse 49 of Ezekiel. It says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. He's talking to Jerusalem identifying Jerusalem as having a sister called Sodom. Now you have to stop thinking in the natural now. Think in the spirit. This is spiritual. Okay. Pride. That's number one. Pride. Mm -hmm. Now we hear a lot about pride today in the United States of America. Especially after the towers went down. Boy, the, the pride was swelling up in Americans. and We were going off to kill so many people over in the Middle East. Still doing it today as a nation. Fullness of bread. Fullness of bread. Has any nation in the world been more full with bread than the United States of America? 
Man. An abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Any nation on earth with more idleness than America? You know, back in the 1800s, most Americans lived in the country and they had farms and they worked sun up to sundown six days a week and there was very little idleness okay among Americans back in the 1800s but after World War two and their people started migrating to the cities to the suburbs and there was more idleness they'd work 40 hours 40 hours in a week and how many hours are in a week a hundred and something hour 168 hours or something so 40 of those hours were for work and the other time was for whatever they wanted to do, see? And so there was abundant of idleness in her. A lot of times in this country that they probably wouldn't call it idleness, but every living moment other than going to school or work is with the Xbox. Yeah, Xbox yeah. 360. You know, or with the uh, <laughs> videos. I mean, it's right. just a... That's, that's the deal. That's that's right. That's where the extra idleness would right. have filled up with that. Right, idleness. A waste of time. Filling our minds mm -hmm. up with things mm -hmm. that are not going to benefit or profit us in the walk of the Lord. And that's that's what it's talking about. Abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. That's verse 49 of Ezekiel 16. He lays it out. Okay, and there's still more. Okay, the sin of Sodom. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. Okay, so the abomination of homosexuality comes out in, the, in verse 50. And they were haughty. But first came the pride. Okay the fullness of bread, the abundance of idleness, okay, and not strengthening the hand of the poor and the needy. Then they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. That's mm. what God did. So God says, Hear the word of the, of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? God is talking to his people here. Okay? saith the Lord. What, what, what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? In other words, God's people giving lip service to God. Bringing things and saying they're going to do this or saying they're going to do that. And then... God says, what's the purpose in this? Why are you doing this? Because you love me? Because you love my people? Because you love mankind like I love mankind and I want to see people come to, to my son and get saved? Is that the purpose you're doing it? Or is it for self-gratification? See. Well, what's the purpose in it if you're doing all this over here? Right. Exactly. <laughs> what's the purpose of you sacrificing to me? If over here you're doing all this other That's stuff right. that does Amen. not please That's me right. and is totally against me, what what's the deal here? Right. It's, it's religion. It becomes yeah. religion. He says, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of the lambs or of the, go or of the he goats. When you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Mm. Don't bring anything empty. It calls them okay? vain. Sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Don't bring any more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. In other words, God's saying the prayers that many today are praying are just self-centered prayers. Self-centered prayers. It's okay to pray that the Lord would help us in our walk. We want to do that. But God wants us, our prayer to be a worship. God wants our prayer time to be a worship unto him, an adoration of who he is, because he is. Worshiping him, and then praying for others, and then lifting up the needs that we might have in our life to him, knowing that he, he already knows before we ask. Jesus said, the Father knows what we have need of. He says, bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. 
It is iniquity. Even the solemn meeting. Mm, even your coming together. Yeah, it's, it's said iniquity. It's sin. And, and a story comes to me of Keith Green when he was at a big uh, concert in San Francisco. They had a big outdoor concert back in the early 80s, I think. And uh, and he quoted this. This verse was quoted, or some, some girl got up there and started quoting this verse. And, and uh, and it just really blew him away because this is what God was saying. Why are you coming together to worship me? And then you're just going to go back out into the world. This the is what Keith, yes. Keith Green had said, right. you know. Why is there no change? See, God says people are afraid to just surrender to him. We have nothing to fear, okay, from surrender. We have everything to gain. And that's the life of Christ. More of his life operating through us in order to reach those that God wants to reach. We see a lot of people, saints, around us and on the internet who are, you can see that they're bound up in one little area or another in their walk. And they can't seem to get past it. And it's because of, a lot of times it's because of fear. It's because they're afraid that God might upset their cart a little bit too much or God might not be there for them like they would hope him to and be. And they don't want to let go of it right, either. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord says, no, don't do that. You know, uh, <coughs> the Lord knows our heart. Amen. You know, we can come to him in prayer and, and everything and pray and do all these things, but the Lord knows our heart. And, you know, that's what he was saying to these guys. Hey, it's vain what you're bringing to me. It's an abomination to me because, you know what, I, I know what you are. I know who you are. I know what you've been doing. And you're coming to me with this, and, and you're doing all this on this side, which is not of me and is not pleasing to me. He said, basically, why don't you get real with me? Get real. Put aside these things that are an abomination to me right. and vain, vanity. Amen. And get real with me. That's right. Because he wants to yeah. pour out mighty blessings. He you might to... as well get real with him because he knows us through and through. Amen. You can't hide nothing from God. No. And you know what? When we get real with the Lord and we come to him and, and we say, Lord, this and this and this. I got this going on. And I can't get, I cannot seem to get past this, Lord. I need you to do this work in me. I need you to take this away. I need you to to work this work right. in me let me see the grace that you've given me lord to let that go right right because you know what god loves real right because the, <laughs> the see the flesh will blind us saints the flesh will deceive us yes you know and you're pulled away you're pulled away you know maybe like for from former friends or whatever you know egypt is always trying to draw us back in trying to pull right us back into Egypt but see the Lord he has us do these things he has us put things away he has us let go of things let go of people hey man that's a hard one that would want to pull us back into Egypt right. want to get us back on the vanity way the vanity trip lifting up of self right amen always always that pull is there thank you father but see, the deal is, we have to take a stand Amen. and say no. Right. And really, no devil, because that's who's trying to do it. Right. Pull us back in. But see, there's that thing inside that's still there, seems like. And that's what the Lord says. It's what's inside that is what's pulling us right. away. From the stand we know we need to take. It's that, what's inside. That part of us that's not fully surrendered. And that, so we need to get right. real with God if that's the case. And say, God, look at this. I know you see it. And look at this. I have to have you take this out of me. I have to have you change my heart in this area. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get rid of this thing that is a stumbling block. A hindrance to my walk. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know what, God? I can't do this. I cannot take it out of myself. I cannot remove this. This is the work that only you can do. Amen. Get real with God. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Good word, man. And then you know. there won't be the Lord coming and saying, Hey, this is vanity to me, what I'm hearing. This is an abomination to me, what I'm hearing. Because I know you. Let's let the Lord look at our heart in reality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In reality you, and say, Yes, my son, my daughter, let me cleanse that. Amen. Let me remove that. Hallelujah. Because this is serious, you know. Amen. It really is. Because yes. the time we're coming into and are in right now. Listen, when we go into this next year, this, you guys, you got to be with the Lord. You got to be rooted in the Lord. Grounded. You have to know Amen. the Lord and know who He is in you. Hallelujah. The mighty God. We have to have the foundation, and, and it has to have things built on it that are of God. Mm -hmm. Not of this world. Not the things of this world. Not the music of this world. Not the materialistic things of this world. Not the people of this world. But God. Amen. And the things of God. Because I guarantee you, in this time, there will be a pull as never before. And that's the reason the Lord's trying to purge this stuff out right now. Amen. Get rid of it right now. Right. And we have all the grace, all the power that we need, saints, to come boldly to the throne of grace, to find help, okay, grace to help us in our time of need. And that's today. Right. That's today. That's right, right now we have the grace. Amen. Hallelujah. To he come has bold. given us the power to overcome. Amen. Amen. So don't be listening to those maybe little <laughs> voices that have that pricking, tormenting kind of fear deal that says, you can't do this. Oh, if you do this, oh, what is going to happen here and what is going to happen there? No. God gave us the power Amen. to overcome Hallelujah. the world, the flesh. The flesh. And the devil. And the devil. Hallelujah. Praise God. By the word of our testimony and because of the blood of the Lamb. He has power. Amen. Hallelujah. Over death. That's right. Anything tending to the flesh is death. That's right. The Almighty God has power over death and hell. Amen. This is what he's been really, really speaking to me about. And so, all right, he has power of death and hell. So he's in us, right? That's right. The Lord is in us. He lives in us. Amen. So what does that mean? We have the power to overcome death and hell. Amen. The overcomer lives with inside that's of us. That's right. Amen. That's right. So and that means we're overcomers, but we right. have to reckon that to be so. Yes. And that's and the problem because we keep focused on the natural things, okay, yes. around us. Mm -hmm. We keep seeing that little thing, or we keep, you know, or here in that whatever. Thing. Yeah. yeah. And so, so that thing seems to overwhelm us because it comes in through the natural senses, right. and we're not focused. We're not intelligently being focused mm -hmm. upon the Lord in the Spirit. See, mm -hmm. listening in the Spirit. Seeing in the spirit, hearing in the spirit, smelling, having that sense, that knowing, that intuitive knowledge in the spirit that this is God speaking and he wants yes. me to go this way. Yeah. See, and, he it, says, and it comes by faith. We've got to, got to go back to faith amen. again because, amen. you know, there might be decisions you're having to make today. And you don't know if you're making the right one. But by faith, you just you just look to the Lord. You say, Seek the Lord, Lord in faith. I believe, Lord, this is what you want me to do. And as soon as you start to take that step, you'll know that's what the Lord wants, or you'll know that's not what he wants. See? God is looking for more of, he's looking for us to be more courageous in the things of God. Right. Courageous. He's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So we have nothing to fear, see, because he says... His angels are in charge all around us. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when the Lord sees us and He knows, okay, there, that's good. There, he's walking by faith. She's walking by faith. 
that's good and then he sees us maybe fixing to take a wrong turn he'll just that angel will just come over there and cause something to happen to keep us back on the narrow way see because God is faithful to us hallelujah you know we have the power the Lord's just emphasizing this we have the power to overcome Amen. but the problem is so many times is how serious are we about it oh that's good how serious are we about the walk of the Lord how serious are we about walking in the steps of Jesus is it just a surface thing a nonchalant kind of deal or is it deep deep in our spirit Amen. that at whatever cost we're gonna walk the way Amen. Hallelujah. whatever it means whatever happens we're still gonna walk the way thank you Jesus if it means loss of former friends loss of reputation loss of material possessions whatever it means at any cost we're gonna walk that walk are we serious about that you know the Lord tests us on that all the time let me share this because you're saying that and it's coming to me see what was coming to me when she was sharing part of that toward the end there is false teachers false teachers teach people falsely they teach them things like they're never going to have to suffer deprivation of things they're always going to be walking in the on the cloud 29 yeah. okay they're they're never going to be down in the dumps and if they are there's something wrong with them okay blah 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 whatever they're teaching falsely but the Lord says we must keep our focus on him and know that no matter if we are deprived of certain things in our walk in this life down here in this pilgrim journey that he is with us see that's what he wants us to remember he is with us so what if I lose this or lose that God is with me because see the times coming when the sorrows get more in the earth and we're we are deprived of certain things that we like right now or we enjoy right now that God gives us the benefit to enjoy and those things are gone how are we going to act toward our king mm -hmm. are we going to worship him still are we going to just or or are we just going to worship him in the good times or be like the children right of exactly Israel. God says we are not like the children of Israel of old that we are the victorious warriors today he says you are my battle axe today okay we are his children I want to continue on here your new moons God says in your appointed feast my soul hated they are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. God says, I'm, 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 I'm fed up with all this assembling in a false way. Yeah, God wants us to come in the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. He says, when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Mm -mm. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Oh, that's These so are the serious. people that are, that are just walking in the flesh way, thinking they're walking in the spirit. Now, I'm not saying everyone hearing this is like that because I believe you're not. I believe many who are listening to this right now, you are walking by the Spirit. And you are walking in a way you're, you're being attacked by the enemy. Sure, we are, we're being attacked by the enemy. God's people get attacked in the Spirit by the devil and his hordes. And those devil, those devils and, and the hordes of the devil, they work through people a lot of times. So we have to be able to distinguish this. That's where the spiritual intelligence comes in. We but, don't pay attention to what we're seeing or hearing. But... We are overcomers. Overcomers, that's right. We are overcomers in right, it. Right, right. And what no matter were you reading? What? You were reading to me yesterday. What were you reading about humility? Mm -hmm. You were reading about that that the ability to just be silent. Yes. And just and just say not a word. <laughs> see. The Lord's taught there, us. There's so about much that power in that. You say not a word. Mm -hmm. Just silent. Hallelujah. He says, and when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear you. Your hands are full of blood. Oh, wow. Your hands are full of blood. In other words, it's like it's like using other people to further our own self. You know, the the blood will speak of the life of 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 the of the living thing. Okay, and, and this is what people were doing. Their hands were full of blood. And not only that, they were killing and murdering the innocent. Okay, the little babies and children, offering up to Molech. You know the the mm -hmm. the God of fire. He says, verse 16, wash you, 
make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. See, it's something we learn as we're walking in the Spirit. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Plead for the widow. Come now, he says, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Hallelujah. See, see, God, we, we, we just read all the way up to verse number 17, and, and it's just like boom, bam. God's just knocking down, and, and, and he's judging his people. He's saying, this is what you're doing, and I hate it. And then he says. And then he says, come now. Let yeah. us reason together. Mm -hmm. This is so beautiful. In another place in Isaiah, God says, Come on. Let me go there. I'm going to go there. It's in Isaiah 43. Uh, God speaking to his people. And, and this, this verse right here, let us reason together, God says there. And look at Isaiah 43. He's such a good Lord. He's so holy. He, he loves us so much. <laughs> Listen, he says, verse 24 of Isaiah 43, Thou hast bought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. God says he does it for his own sake, and will not remember our sins. Mm -hmm. And then he says in verse 26, Put me in remembrance. He tells his people, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father hath sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and have given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. See, God allows the judgment to come in order to turn his people back to him right. and to remind them, right. hey, you're not doing anything. I'm doing the work here. Right. I'm the one who's forgiving you. I'm the one who's made the provision for you. Okay? It's not you. It's not you. It's, it's me, says the Lord. I'm the one doing it. And really, you could sum up the whole book of Isaiah in that way. God said, look what I'm doing. Okay? Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I, I can go on and on. Keep going. Honey. You can't uh, say... <laughs> You know, it's not like you're setting out to do this thing. You you can't do it. It's God's work. It's not your work. It's not our work. It's God's work. He's the one that does it. You know what our part is? Falling down before Him in submission. Hallelujah. Falling God. down before Him in repentance Hallelujah. and humility. That, Hallelujah. That's our work. That's right. That's our part. Amen. You are not, you and I, we're, you and us, we are not going to be able to do any work in us. Okay? Right, that's right. If God does not do the work, it, won't get it done. will not get done. That's right. If you sit out and say, I'm not going to this or that, and, and you're trying to take care of this sin or something that's in your life on your own, it's not going to happen. It's futile. It is not going to happen, it, and as a matter of fact, it might even get worse. It only comes the it comes by the blood. That's right. The and the only thing. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the law, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. And has the only freed thing. Freed me from the law of sin and death. The Hallelujah. only thing that's going to change it. The okay. only thing that will change it is submission. You know, repentance, falling down before God and saying, God, I'm repenting sorry, for the sin. And saying, God, take care of this. Take this out of me, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Remove this thing from me, Lord. Remove this tor tormenting thing from me. Remove this tormenting fear, Lord. This uh, besetting sin, Lord. Unbelief, Lord. Remove take it, it away. from Hallelujah. me, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want this in me anymore. I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to go another day like this anymore. Hallelujah. That's what we have to do. Praise Him. He says, if, verse 19 of chapter 1 of Isaiah, God's talking to His people here, okay? His people then and His people today. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. 
I wrote in there, Beulah land. Hallelujah. Beulah land. There's a Canaan land. Amen. A Beulah and a Canaan land. Now listen. Go ahead. You want to say something? Yeah. A, a minute ago, I wanted to say that there is a Canaan land at the end. Right. See, the Lord will bring us through all these times, all these trials and tribulations and, and hard times and pressing times. But you know what? There's a Canaan land. Hallelujah. Where the promise is fulfilled. There Amen. is a Canaan Amen. land that we are traveling toward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, if you, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment. Mm -mm. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Now, God likens his people to cities, saints. He, he said that in Jeremiah. He said to Jeremiah, I have made thee a defense city. He says in Zechariah chapter 2 that he shall be a wall of fire around Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Now, i got to read that. So I, I, sometimes I don't have these memorized, and I, but I know where it's at. And I'm going to read that. It's in Zechariah chapter 2. It says, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. That's it, right there. See, as a, for I, verse 4, and said unto him, Run, speak to this, chapter 2, verse 4 of Ze Zechariah. Speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns, plural, without walls, for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I say the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. See, that glory is the Lord Jesus Christ come to us by the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and the precious blood sent from the Father. Okay, and God is a wall of fire around us today protecting us from the devil. We need to stay in the spirit and, and not lean upon our own understanding. Hallelujah. You know, when it says without walls, that's interesting. It says without walls. Because what does man try to do? Build up walls. Build up walls. Right. Build up this little box they want God in. Right. That's right. And it's without walls. There's freedom without walls, isn't Amen. there? There's really no place that the spirit can't go with it without any walls. Hallelujah. And then it says that he's the wall around. Total Hallelujah. Wall. That's right. Let me Let me continue on here. He says, how is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. It's a backsliding, mm -mm -mm. see? And if you're backsliding today, God says, come back. He'll take you back. Thy silver is become dross, thy wine mixed with water. See, there's a watering down of the word today. It's a, they, they've got this compromising spirit going, okay? Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore thus saith the Lord of the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries, and avenge me of mine enemies. See God's going to take care of business here in this time God's going to take care of the enemies we don't have to do it we have to worship God this is his call to us love the Lord our God with all our heart soul mind and strength love our neighbor as ourselves. this fulfill the law and the prophets we need to walk in the truth of the Lord today hallelujah it's not by the deeds of the law it's by the Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved unto the good works which God has prepared before for us to do okay before the foundation of the world, he prepared good works for all of us to do in Christ, not in ourself, in Christ. Because it's Christ doing the work in us and through us. It's the Father. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. He says, And I will turn mine hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross, oh, and take you. away all thy tin. <laughs> and I will restore thy judges at the, as at the first. And thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness. The faithful city. See God calls us this. 
He says, you're going to be called the, the faithful city. Hallelujah. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. See, all the judgment of God, all the wrath of God went upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. Don't mm. forsake the Lord today. Mm. Come to the Lord. He will receive you. I promise right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All who come to the Lord Jesus today with a broken and contrite heart. God will receive you. God will fill you with his Holy Spirit. And God will set you in the narrow way. And God will make you and help you take each step of that narrow way. He will give you the grace and the power you need to go through the narrow way to the very end hallelujah. hallelujah his grace is sufficient praise God Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness verse 28 chapter 1 of Isaiah and the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed for they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired and ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. These are those that forsake the Lord, saints. Mm -hmm. And the strong shall be as tow, and the maker of it as a spark. And they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. Mm -hmm. This is so serious. I want to I switch over here. I'm going to go to, it says in verse 29, for they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired, and ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. Verse 30, For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. Jeremiah chapter 17. You know, I just grabbed my Bible, saints, and just grabbed a, a leaf and turned it over right to where the Lord told me to go. I didn't even know it. This is how the Holy Spirit does it. It says here, in verse 5 of chapter 17 thus saith the Lord curse cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord for he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, in whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted, planted by the waters, that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, hallelujah, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. See? Isn't that beautiful? Now that's so beautiful. You know this verse you just read. Verse 5. Yeah. First thing. Thus saith the Lord. Cursed. Be the man that trusteth. In man. And maketh flesh. His arm. That could be another man. Or it could be yourself. Yeah. Be yourself. Anything to do with the flesh. Right. Whose heart. Departed, departed from the Lord. Now see, it's it's like it's saying, you trust in the flesh, it's like your your heart will. It is departing. It is departing right. from the Lord when you're trusting in the flesh. Right. And trusting in yourself, trusting in fleshly things, then then you're de it's like you're departing. You're departing right. we're at that in, point. If we're if we're trusting in our own reason, our own ability to think things out, okay. Uh, now God given God has given us these minds that are able to think, okay, but He wants that surrendered to Him, and then He He will absolutely clean out the hard drive, saints. I'm telling mm -hmm. you right now, God will take it, and He will, uh, you know, put out all that stuff that needs to go to the recycle bin. He'll put it there, and then. All, he'll take that whole recycle bin and delete it, okay? When we're really willing and we're really submitted, he'll do that for us. Hallelujah. 
And then we have to be careful that we don't put other things back in from the world. See? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. Mm, that's good. And this is, and whose hope the Lord is. Hallelujah. And whose hope the Lord is. Hallelujah. That's Jeremiah seventeen seven. We have hope Amen. in the Lord. That's right. We're not supposed to be hoping in the things of the world, or hoping the in Amen. the fleshly things. No, no, no. Amen. Hallelujah. Our hope is in the Lord. And when we hope in the Lord, we have all things. Yes, we do. We you know, things, and we, we don't. Have the Lord. If you don't look at the natural thing and stuff and, and trust the Lord, then. He uh, takes care of all the natural Yes, he stuff. does. Yes, he does. But our hope is to be in him and Amen. nothing else That's but right. him. But we're still learning. It. Yes, we are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every we're still day. going. <laughs> still going. We're still in the battle. See now. Every day. Now, verse eight of chapter seventeen here in, in Jeremiah. You know, this is the beauty of God's word because it's it's a compilation of sixty six books, but they all agree and they all go together. You know, Jeremiah was a major prophet as well, but today we're talking about Isaiah the prophet. There's so much in Isaiah that the Lord wants to bring out for His people to understand that He sees us, He knows us. He knows when we're rebelling. He knows when we're not. Okay. He God knows. God knows today. This this man that trusts in the Lord, this person, shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. Okay. And shall not see when heat cometh. In other words, the time's getting tough, but it doesn't it won't affect us like it would if we were just trusting in man. You see what I'm saying? That's because there's deep roots. That's right. There's deep roots going by the river, the river of life. But her leaf shall be green when everything is burning up mm -hmm. around us. God says, our leaf's going to be green. And Hallelujah. And that's an example. You know, when we lived over in the other house, uh, the Lord gave us a sign of that. Uh, right in the natural realm, you know, it was so hot. And everybody's garden was burning up. I mean, total crispy critter kind of deal. But our garden was, was flourishing green. and green and producing. And it was so awesome. And people come by and they say, you still got a garden? And it say, was yeah, good. yeah. It, the Lord is touching it. It was a, it was a testimony. Amen. Just exactly of this verse right here. Hallelujah. Yeah. You'll be green when everything is right. is black with and crispy. That's exactly but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. See, there you Neither go. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. There and that go. garden yielded fruit all the way up to November. Oh, it did, man. <laughs> it did. That and was so a good one, boy. That's just an example, you know, that uh <coughs> There will be the springs of living water in the midst of the drought that will be spiritually, see. Amen. And I we mean, are, we will have the living waters flowing that's from that's us. Right. We are the and, temple of the Lord today. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Man, praise God for this word today because I'm so thankful the Lord has put Sharon and I together. And, and I just thank God that she came into this broadcast today because it's really, really good to have her by my side I really love it when she comes in and and uh, because it challenges me and it challenges her and we're both listening to the Spirit of the Lord speak to us what to say and uh, we pray to God that this enriches you more and more under the perfect day to help you grow in grace and you know we are in in the time of the dry Jesus said to the women who were weeping behind him carrying the cross he said don't weep for me weep for yourselves and for your children if they do this in the green wood what are they going to do in the dry? Okay, and we're in that time. We're in the time of the famine of hearing the word of the Lord. People are not hearing the word of the Lord. They hear the word spoken, but they're not hearing the voice of God. They're looking at the people. They're, or they're just doing some kind of religious thing, and, and the word's not coming in and bearing fruit because they're not hearing it. This is the time we're in in this age. But God says he will. He does have that remnant. He's got that remnant. Okay, and we're part of that remnant, and he wants to grow that remnant. He wants to make it larger. Okay, he doesn't need a lot of people. God doesn't need a lot of people to do what he's doing right now in this in this earth. But he he wants more people to come. He desires us to want him. Hallelujah. 
So let us have that desire today. Let's let's pray right now. Father, I pray you put that deep desire in all of us, in your children. And every one of us, Lord, hallelujah, deeper. And those who've never had that deep desire to really be sold out to you, Lord, they're believers, Lord, they love you. And they thank you for their salvation. But they've really not ever had that deep desire just to really go 100% all the way with you, no matter what. Lord, I pray you, you give them the courage to cry out to you for that, Lord. And just put it upon them today, O oh God. And for those of us, Lord, who we have sold out to you today, Lord, we've asked you, Lord, to do your work in us, no matter what, Lord. That, that you just give us the courage to continue on through this day. And as you bring us, Lord, to... Uh, decisions you bring us to places of surrender each day that we will follow you that we will do as you command knowing that that is where the fruits going to come from Lord that's when our roots are going to go down and we're going to be planted by that river of water Lord Lord you see all the stuff that your children are doing today Lord everything that's going on whether it's of the spirit or the soul or the body Lord whether it's of the flesh, the world, or the devil. You know, Lord, what's going on with your church today. Open the eyes to see, Father, we pray. Open eyes to see today in the Spirit so that we can all make the adjustments that are necessary in our walk with you, Lord, by your grace and by your faith, hope, and love that you put in us, in your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the faith, the hope, and the love. Oh, we so thank you, Father. Lord, crush every work of darkness crush every work of darkness that would try to steal any part of this word from us this day in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah Hallelujah you know um, I want to give the the Lord glory and thanks for answered prayers so many answered prayers and I think John had mentioned um, that my Bible had fallen apart I was getting uh, in bed to read the word and I picked my Bible up and it just Man, fell just... totally apart with the binding and everything and the pages ripped I was like whoa and you know I want to tell you that um, a blessed uh, brother um, is sending me a Bible Hallelujah. and it's on its way and, and that's an answered prayer and I thank the Lord for it and I also want to give uh, special thanks to those that support this work with their prayers and their gifts that they have counted this work important to the Lord and important to them and I just want to thank you and bless you in the name of the Lord and I ask the Lord for a special blessing for you today and I also ask the Lord to bless all those that are listening to the broadcast, that they will be touched and moved, challenged, changed, that the Spirit of God will pierce your heart, Hallelujah. that the Word of God does not and will not return void that Hallelujah. you're hearing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord. I also ask you Lord to bless our enemies bless our enemies Lord with the truth Hallelujah. with the truth Lord thank you God that you will change their hearts Lord yes Lord pierce their hearts with your truth Lord God Hallelujah. before it's too late amen thank you Jesus and oh. there comes a time when it is too late and I pray, Lord, that you will change their hearts before that time comes Amen. in their life. Yes, Lord. Have mercy. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy, for your grace, for your protection, for your provision. Amen. Thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, that you have put a new set of tires on our truck, and I thank you so much for it, Lord. And all the provision, Lord, I thank you so much for. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for my husband, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. I thank you that he is a mighty man of God that loves oh, you very honey. much. Honey. And has a heart for you and for you people. 
Praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you, I can feel you looking down on us right now. And I thank you, Lord, that you are. Hello. I pray you help people, Lord. Help them today to see the truth. Help them to see that the things of the world don't mean anything. That things that are of you, spiritual things, are eternal. It's the eternal that counts. Hallelujah. It's the eternal that matters. Hallelujah. It's what are we storing up in heaven that matters. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not what's stored up on this earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. Help us much, all God. to be giving of what you have given us. Give out what you have given us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise you. Thank you, Jesus, so much. Thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for giving breakthrough. Thank you for breakthrough, Lord. For thank all you that thank you're you. the one that is in control, not the devil. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. You have control. And I thank you for that. Praise your name, Jesus' Lord. name. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just so bless you. And, and, and once again, Lord, you know our hearts, Father. And let us be walking in openness with you, Lord, and humility. And not be relying upon anything of the flesh, but just trusting in you, Lord knowing that you have it all mapped out for us. Hallelujah. We just thank you so much. And we just give you glory, honor, and praise. And just bless us all, Lord, with the spirit of peace that surpasses all understanding this day, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. If y'all want to contact us, anyone wants to contact, you feel free to contact us at Behold a New Thing at Yahoo.com. Behold a New Thing at yahoo.com uh, we're, we're more than willing to answer any questions or just minister to you anything you might need disciple you uh, and that means you know like you would write and ask questions and we write you back some answers by the spirit of God in the word or Skype or, Skype or messenger. Uh, messenger Yahoo messenger uh, just write us I mean we'll be more than willing and happy to uh, minister the love of Jesus and the Spirit of God with you and to you and receive also from you what the Lord would be speaking through you, you know. Because uh, that's how the body is supposed to work. We're all members of the body of Christ. And uh, it's beautiful what God's doing in this hour. And let's just press on in and, and go forward in Him. So that's Behold a New Thing at Yahoo.com. And also on this uh, website here on Spreaker, We'll have a link of of one of our our main blog. Okay, you go there, and everything you can else everything is else is listed on the right hand mm -hmm. column where we we're, we're located on the yeah, internet. Everywhere. And you can uh, just be blessed. Hallelujah. Be filled and full, and the Lord be praised. Now the Lord bless you and keep you, and make His holy face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up His holy countenance upon you, grant you peace today. The Lord be gracious unto you and fill you with all the fullness of God. His name, His authority, and His character be upon you today. Walk in the fullness today and know that the Lord is with you. He has never left you, He has never forsaken you, and He never will. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah.